Thank you for joining us here live in the KEXP studios. I'm Cheryl Waters, and I don't know about you, but I am so excited to welcome this band live to the KEXP studios. It's Amel and the Sniffers. Welcome. Yo. Hey. So wonderful to have you here, and I cannot wait to see this live performance. We'll chat when you're done, but Amel and the Sniffers live on KEXP. Take it away. Big. I 
Amaral and the Sniffers live on KEXP. Incredible. Hamill and the Sniffers live on KEXP. That was amazing. Thank you so much. Jeez, jeez, thank you. So great to have you here. And I just look at the raw energy that this band have. I just feel like you just took a power cord and plugged it into me and then just flipped a huge switch. And I know that the connection you have with your audience is just so incredible. I... I read the interviews where you talk early on through your whole career about being drawn to the hardcore all ages shows when you were young. And I just think about the control that you have on stage now. And do you remember what it felt like to finally, um, as a young person who just loved that kind of music, jump up on stage yourself and start doing that? Um, yeah, I think it was just always really exciting. Like, cause I'd watch the hardcore bands and I never really thought about getting up there myself. I'd think maybe I'll sell merch one day or something like that. And then when I got on stage, I was like, yeah, I just want to be as rowdy as I was in the crowd. You do still have that raw energy, but I have to say, over many years of performing, I mean, you're a pro, you are in control, and you have quite a presence. Do, have you really thought about how to grow that stage presence, or has it just come naturally? Mm, I'm not sure. I, I guess I probably a bit of both. Some of it's probably subconscious, but some of it is also probably conscious. You know, if I see a video back, I'm like, ladies, stop running around like a crazy person. Get a little bit together. You look amazing. And I know that you love to do the clothes and the makeup. And I don't know how you dress when you're not on stage. But it must so, be so fun to have an outlet to, like, go out and look for really cool things. Because you do want to look special up on stage. I mean, is it fun to go out and go shopping for the live shows? Yeah, I do enjoy it. I like rising up. I like a spectacle. I think... Life can be really boring, so it's fun that, to get to have a place to just yeah, look, look glamorous or whatever I look like or whatever I want to look like. When I'm off stage, I usually just wear tracky dacks or whatever, but sometimes I'll dress up too. It's good just to get out there and feel confident and comfortable, and that's exactly how you come across. Thank you. You radiate such confidence, and I appreciate the duality that you have exhibited in the songs, especially on your most recent album. And 
Your honesty and vulnerability really speaks to so many. I know it speaks to me. I've heard your fans talk about it. And you seem so open to learning and growing. And I read an interview once where you said, people are open to you when you're, you know, it's contagious when you're open. And have you had a lot of interaction with the fans where they talk about appreciating that you go that extra step and you're just yourself? Um, to an extent, I think that song, Knifey, that we wrote resonates with a lot of people, a lot of females and femmes, um, which is a really beautiful thing. I think it's, it's nice that people resonate. A lot of people with high energy as well can relate um, to the energy, I suppose. They feel a bit more validated that it's okay to be so turbo. Um, but, yeah, most of the time I just think it's like I want to create an intensity that is contagious and, like, a, I want to, like, show that you don't need permission to just be whatever feels right at a moment, especially in music because music is for that. It's not to be reserved unless you want to be reserved. It's, it's to be free and to get, a, get around it. Everyone looks so happy performing in this band. You've been together for a while. I've heard you talk about it being like a family. You've lived together off and on. Of course, you're living together on the road. You must know each other so well. What roles does each person kind of take in the band or in the family? Bryce plays drums. I play bass. <laughs> <laughs> I, was, oh, I was thinking that. I was going to go there. <laughs> uh, clearly, you've been asked this question before. <laughs> Declan's a comedian. He wishes he was a comedian. <laughs> no, Amy doesn't have a I sense say it was of humor, a good one. apparently. <laughs> Gus is vibe technician, party boy. Um, Bryce is like the sweet one. It's just kind of like, oh, yeah. It's like Ringo. <laughs> Declan just loves rock and roll, like just rock dog. And I'm the boss. Amy's the boss, yeah. Lots of paperwork around Amy. That's right. Emails. Get the money up. Yeah. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> You recorded your first songs in Amy's bedroom, I understand, in a house that you shared, and your first record over in the UK. And then it sounds like your most recent record you had to record in between lockdowns, kind of running out and getting some recording sessions in. I think I read in a warehouse. So you've kind of done it all, if I've gotten that correctly. What do you look forward to taking all the little pieces of those experiences in doing next time around? Oh, that, that was directed at Amy for sure. Amy, you got to answer that one. She's the boss. Yeah, you're the boss. <laughs> um, I don't know. I haven't really thought about too far what will happen next. I mean, I really like the rawness of just like recording, oh, sorry, rehearsing and writing in like a, a bit of a dingy space. But at the same time, it was funny when we did demos, and this is our first album we did demos for, how different it actually sounded when you got out of like a tin shed and into a, a room. I was like, oh, there's actually like melodies and stuff. I didn't actually hear that when we were writing. Um, but I don't know. Yeah, doing demos can definitely bring some things out that you hadn't heard before, but you want to maintain that rawness, so there must be something in between for you. Mm. <laughs> Comfort, to me, came out in late 2021, which, of course, was right in the middle of the unending lockdowns that you were having over in Australia, but you got a chance to give it a rebirth of sorts with an expanded edition earlier this year, which was great. Can you talk a little bit about that? Um, yeah, so when Comfort to Me came out, we couldn't play live at that stage, so... Um, our friends at PHC, we filmed Comfort to Me from the start to the finish, um, just live in Williamstown Dock, which is a place in uh, Melbourne. Um, and we, put, we thought that put that out because I guess it was like the, probably the one time we'll play the album from the start to the finish. But this year we've actually got to celebrate playing live, so we've just been on tour all year, which has been really fun. Because um, I think, you know, during lockdown, I forgot that we were a live band. Like, that's why we started to play live. That's why we wrote our, all our albums to play live and Comfort to Me we wrote to actually be heard on record. But playing it live, I was like, oh, yeah, that's what it's about. That must be great, as you said, getting back out there and getting your feet wet again in the live show. How has 2022 been for you, all the live shows? Yeah, fun as hell. <laughs> I've been enjoying it. Um, lots of people coming out, all different kinds of people, different shapes and sizes and ages and everything. So, yeah, like last night there was kid probably just up to my hip length that did a stage dive in a suicidal tendencies cap and stuff so yeah it's been sick. I love to hear that well with all this time on the road as much as you've been enjoying it do you look forward to getting back home having maybe a little solitude and quiet time maybe reading a book or two? I reckon Gus will. Gus's favorite thing to do is lay in bed on TikTok so. Always. <laughs> Well, thank you for getting out of bed and coming in today for this incredible live session. We've been looking forward to it for so long, and it's so great to have you here. Thanks for sharing your music with us. Thanks for letting us on. We appreciate thank it. Thank you.
You're listening to KEXP. We're a public radio station supported by our listeners. Thanks to everyone who supports KEXP. You can make a donation and learn more about us at kexp.org. And subscribe to our YouTube channel and discover so much great music like Amel and the Sniffers and so much more. Thank you once again, live in our KEXP studios with Amel and the Sniffers. Thank you. Discover new music at listenerpoweredkexp.org.